Hey, y'all, this is Lauren Bowles. You know I play Holly, the new waitress at Merlot's on HBO's True Blood, right? All right, here's the deal. I'd rather spend all night with them damn bloodsuckers than another minute listening to that Mr. Media radio. No, thanks. <laughs> thanks a lot. Today on Mr. Media, I'll be speaking with actress Tana Frederick and writer-director Henry Jaglum about their third and latest collaboration, Queen of the Lot, which co-stars Noah Wiley. Stick around. Hey, did you know that you can listen to the latest Mr. Media show right on your phone with the Stitcher app? Stitcher's smart radio for your smartphone. Mr. Media is on demand and on the go with Stitcher. Download Stitcher for your phone today. Get the free app at www.stitcher.com. That's S-T-I-T-C-H-E-R.com. So much media. So little time. Who keeps track of it all? Well, that would be me. This is Bob Andelman, and this is a Mr. Media interview. You know, MrMedia.com, MRMedia.com. Stop by and check it out. There are almost 700 archived celebrity interviews for your listening pleasure. The show is brought to you today by the ThePartyAuthority.us. Planning a wedding, mitzvah, or corporate event in the New York, New Jersey, or Pennsylvania area? For any and all occasions, call the Party Authority nationwide at 1-800-DIAL-DJs. That's 1-800-342-5357, where one call does it all. Mr. Media is recorded live before a studio audience of anxious, emotional wrecks in the new new media capital of the world, St. Petersburg, Florida. She had Hollywood dreams. What do you want? Like right now or in What general? do you want this only right now? Like right now. Right now. But what happens when dreams come true? Take that. Okay. You were great in uh, Red Record 3. You, you were amazing. Oh my gosh, that's so sweet. <laughs> Maggie Chase, famous for her high octane red record series, was arrested Saturday on her second offense of drunk driving. You know, I have a million questions, but most of them lead to that gadget. How did it happen twice? Two is kind of comical if it happens in the short period that it's happened. Has it been hard for you? Honestly, it's unbelievable how you get no coverage on anything until you do something really bad. It's like your brain and my brain make one whole brain. What? I have to constantly fight all of my addictions. Everybody's addicted to something. Did you feel that? There's you, and then there's you. Which one do you want me to be? Are you trying to be with my brother? Are you trying to be with me? I just want to be famous. Oh, you think I'm here? No. Oh. Ah. Never again. That's what Hollywood's all about, right? You really like it? I think it's brilliant. Tana Frederick. Noah Wiley, and also starring Christopher Rydell in Queen of the Lot. I am horrified by what you're saying, and I'm not doing the picture, so forget it. A film by Henry Jaglum. <laughs> Scorsese and De Niro have this kind of relationship. So do Spielberg and Hanks. And Scorsese has it with DiCaprio, too, now that I think of it. Every so often, a director finds his match with an actor who gets their material, their vibe, their je ne sais quoi. That's all the French I know, so we're going to stop there. But that's what's happening between writer-director Henry Jaglum and actress Tana Frederick. Queen of the Lot, a sequel to Hollywood Dreams, opens at selected theaters in Los Angeles on Friday, November 19th. It's the third movie that Jaglum has written and directed in which Frederick has starred. They also work together on Irene in Time. Queen is actually their fourth collaboration, I believe, if you count her starring in his play, just 45 minutes from Broadway, which ran for several months this summer at the Edgemar Center for the Arts in Santa Monica, California, and which they've already filmed for a movie, I just learned. Now, in her three Jaglum starring roles, Frederick typically plays some version of an emotional train wreck. Different characters in Irene in Time and Hollywood Dreams slash Queen of the Lot, but like De Niro working under Scorsese's direction, a recognizable, consistent presence. 
Jaglum is a writer and director with whom many in Hollywood, particularly women, would apparently love to work. Not necessarily because his films are big blockbusters, but because of the detail and sensitivity he gives to women's roles. And his career goes back to his days as an editor on Easy Rider with Dennis Hopper, although this Lee Strasberg-trained method actor also appeared in TV shows such as Gidget and The Flying Nun. You know, as a boy, I love The Flying Nun. And talk about a concept that's right for a remake. But I digress. An, interesting, an additional interesting note about Jaglum's career, he wrote and co-starred in Orson Welles' final film, 1987's Someone to Love, which also introduced the world to Californications' David Duchovny. Hmm. Now, in recent years, Jaglum has worked with a regular ensemble of actors, uh, led by Tana Frederick, uh, and including Karen Black and David Preval, uh, all of whom have previously been guests on Mr. Media. Tana Frederick, Henry Jaglum, welcome to Mr. Media. Thank you. Can you hear me? I can hear you just fine, sir. Tana, Thank are you, you there? Thank you so much for having us on the show. My pleasure. And Tana, delighted to have you back. I'm glad we didn't scare you off the first time. <laughs> Thanks for having me back. <laughs> she, she actually said she had a good time. I, I, I love it when the ladies talk about me afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> Can't hurt the rep. Hey, do you guys worry? Did your families worry about you spending so much time together? Our families, in what sense? Well, every time I get I get something in, in the email, there's there's those two names together again. Well, <laughs> my children don't mind, and her parents don't mind, so we're happy. <laughs> and Henry, am I am I overstating the degree to which uh, Tana has become kind of your voice on screen? Absolutely not. I mean, she she is what every every single director looks for and dreams of. Uh, she is somebody who makes you want to go to the next movie, go to the next step, think of new ways of expressing certain emotions. She she can take you through an emotional roller coaster which is full of pain and genuinely deeply felt pain and sadness of, of her character, and then switch to to Lucille Ball-like comedy that is so strong and so broad that some people misconstrue it and think it's over the top when actually it is just the full expression of this great actress, and then slip right back to to, to, to drama worthy of some of our greatest actresses, you know? And uh, it, it, when you meet an actor like that, all you want to do is try to find new material and write new material and to, to show all the different aspects of them. And, and as far as I'm concerned, we're, we're just getting started. Well, wow, because after that speech, I think she should be ready to retire. How's it going to get any better than that? <laughs> I'm very, very fortunate to have found to be amused for somebody. Um, yeah, I have nothing to, I have nothing to say except thank you. Henry. It's, it's, it's really an exciting thing. I mean, you know, I come out of the actor's studio originally in New York, Lee Strasberg, and the kind of training that is very actor-centered. Uh, the, the work. Is, so derives from the from the actor's sensibility, from your finding aspects of the actor to express your characters through. And if you use traditional actors or actors who have a very narrow kind of range, you, you, you're extraordinarily limited in what you can do in film. But what we can do because of Tana is swing these through these extremes and take an audience. You should listen to an audience while they're watching Queen of the Lot. It's, it's an experience because they are they're really laughing with this fullest expression, the full gutsy laugh, and then suddenly they stop and shift to a, to a profound emotion because she has taken them that way, stopped them up short, then lets them loose again. And it's, 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 it's like some watching some a great musical instrument. I'm just sort of the conductor trying to sort of find a way to put that instrument into, into the narrative. And it's a, it's a gift. It's a magic gift. And Tana, how did this all start with the two of you? Um, it started with me uh, at a play rehearsal uh, when one of my co, uh, one of the other actors came to rehearsal and said, I just spent the best day of my life filming with the most brilliant director uh, ever, Henry Jaglum. And I didn't know who Henry was. And I said, uh, wow, that's amazing. How do I get to work with him? And he said, you know, I'll give you the inside scoop. He's a sucker for... Um, if you if you for anybody who writes him a letter about how much they love his work, so write him a letter and and uh, deliver it to his office. 
so that night I wrote a letter about Henry's film Deja Vu and uh, hand delivered it to the office the next and morning. I got, and then and I, I get I get this letter and I am so impressed, so impressed by the intelligence and the understanding with which the, this letter expresses itself about my movie about Deja Vu that I think this is what an extraordinary girl. So I call her up. And the same day, call, yeah. The same day, and we start <laughs> mm-hmm. having a conversation. And and she's incredibly bright and funny, and she tells me all the specific things that she liked about my movie. Now, naturally, I'm flattered, but I'm also impressed because I think it's a pretty good movie. And so, she, and she's really gotten it. And it took three and a half years, two movies and two plays later, for her to admit to me that she never had seen the film. <laughs> <laughs> she in fact totally hustled me because this, because because this actor had told her that I was a sucker, which I was and am, for a well-written letter of complimenting me about my work. <laughs> so I so she had never seen the film. She op- she she saw the opening titles, I think, in the first minute, and then figured out what it was about and wrote me the letter. And she was very nervous telling me this because at this point we were very close and we had worked on all of the uh, two movies and two plays. And I said that is the greatest thing I've ever heard. That's what actors have to do to get ahead in this town is really find ways of breaking through all the traditional limited communications to get yourself to do the work. I, she, she was afraid I was going to be angry. I was so full of praise for that that I, I took a big article in, in what was that magazine, that uh, actor's magazine, uh, recommending all actors do this, that they all... <laughs> basically <laughs> yeah, create, right. remember, that they all you know, just, just rave to some director, get them on their side, get in to show what they can do in the work, and then confess it a couple of years later. <laughs> well, you know, Henry, it's amazing because, to be honest, Tana had told me that story the first oh, time she was sorry. on the show. But I wanted, I wanted to hear it again because now I got to hear the other side of the story. <laughs> The other side's not really that different. She just, she hustled me. What, there's not that much complicated to a hustle. The only difference is that I'm a hustler too. Being a, in film altogether, you've got to be a hustler. And I love being hustled. I mean, a good hustler loves being hustled. And a good now, director does, loves, and loves an actor who can hustle him. Does a, does a, does a uh, ambitious actor or actress now have to change their, their go-to plan with you? Because that that aspect of your personality has been revealed. I'm sure you don't fall for that over and over again. I do fall for it because I think I'm so smart that I read the letter or I listen to the phone call and I think, okay, this person might have heard that story, but listen to how genuinely they really loved my movie. That's a really intelligent person. That's a person with good taste. They really got the work. And I, 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 could, I mean, I don't think anybody's ever done it as successfully as Tana, but a few people have become, you know, gotten smaller parts doing similar kind of things. But Tana's the queen. You know, she, she did it. The perfection, and she ends up sustaining it and work. We've done now what five five plays together, I think. Yeah, five yeah. Five plays, and we've just done. finished filming. We've just finished filming our fourth film, which is uh, just forty five minutes uh, from, from Broadway. Which we ran as a play. It ran for a full play for a full year here in Los Angeles as a play, which is unheard of in this town. And it's because of Tana's performance. You know, extraordinary performance, which you will see next year opposite Judd Nelson in that film. Well, we had oh. we also had an amazing, amazing cast of some of the, like you said, the the Henry Corral. We had um, Diane Salinger, who's in Queen of the Lot, and, and she was in. She's been in a couple of other of Henry's films, and, and David Peter Proval. Peter Bogdanovich. Oh, Bogdanovich I was talking about in the play it? too. Oh, but, in the play. Yeah, yeah. Karen yeah. Black in the play, also right. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, and uh, Proval and uh, Harriet Shock and. But the Jack but yes, the cast in the in, in Queen of the Lot is absolutely amazing. We, we worked with Catherine Crosby, which was really incredible. She's just one of you know my favorite is? women. Do, 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 do you know who that is? Actually, That's I Catherine, don't know. Catherine Grant was uh, was a Hollywood um, studio player of not not great fame, but some no, notoriety in the 1950s. And then she married the, the biggest star in Hollywood, Bing Crosby. Oh, and that Catherine she, Crosby. That, yeah. <laughs> yes, and that. She, <laughs> and she be, she became America's sort of sweetheart in, in, on, in during Christmases that followed for the next 25 years doing the Christmas specials with their daughter Mary, who is also, the Mary is the one, Mary Crosby, the one who shot J.R. You may have heard about mm-hmm. her. Right. And both of them one. are in this, both of them are in this movie as well. Uh, but playing wonderful parts, I think. And, uh, you know, we've got a terrific cast of actors. 
everything depends upon, upon the actors you use, of course. You know, it just occurred to me while you, when you mentioned Bogdanovich, Henry, what's your actual motivation there? I mean, you, you keep using him in films. Is that to keep him from di- directing a film of his own? What's, what's going on? There? <laughs> no, no, I'd love Peter to direct more films of his own. No, I, I have always been of the belief that um, actors make great directors. Orson Welles said to me once that there's no actor in the no director in the world who doesn't want to make, uh, you know, no director who doesn't want to really be an actor, and that I can get great performances from directors who do not actually act. And I, start, I did that with him I, in, in my first film, Orson Starr, and with Tuesday Well and Jack Nicholson, and then in his last film, sadly, Someone to Love, he starred for me. But I've also used, uh, uh, you know, Bob Rafelston and Monty Hellman and... Uh, Milos Forman and many, many great directors. I, you, I find you get something very special, and I did from Peter in this film, from Bogdanovich in this film, from, from people who, who are used to directing actors being forced to be an actor. There's something very effective about that. Hmm. Um, Tana, has Henry spoiled you in any way? I mean, you know, how will it be at, at some point in the future, I imagine, uh, to be on another director's set with someone who you don't have the same rapport and connection or the same surrounding ensemble. I mean, or on the other hand, has this been a great <laughs> I haven't, I haven't. <laughs> oh, it's a great question. It's I've right thought question. about that. I've actually, I've actually thought about that a lot. And, um, and I'll, I'll tell you when I was, I think, um, my first, my very first job, I think it was 15 or 16 was working in my dad's pharmacy. And, um, and my dad, there were two other girls my age from my high school class who worked who worked with with me, and um, my dad was so hard on me. But but he created this great work ethic in me. But I always I always thought, wow, it's so you know, work is going to be difficult. And then the rest of my life, I, I realized that nobody was ever as hard on me as my dad, but in a good way because nobody was ever as proud of me either. And so I think it's a double edged sword because I think. Um, I think Henry uh, gets the best work from me and is an absolute perfectionist with me. But um, you know, she should be. But she should be working for big commercial directors, and, and we're always hoping that one of the really big commercial directors will see her in one of my films, since most of them do see my films and they're quite positive and respectful about the work, even though they they go they tend to to work on a much larger economic scale and I hope that one of them will find the right part to use Tana because I think she'll just cross over in a moment to the to the hearts of all America the way she does now to the hearts of those who go to art movie theaters where where my movies play to the Lindley theaters out here or to the you know the, all the theaters across America that each city has one or two three art theaters which is the only places we play now uh, so I think I think I want more people to see her. I want the world to know much more about her, and I'm absolutely convinced that they will. It's just a matter of time. Each movie gets a bigger audience. Each movie she gets more fabulous reviews. Uh, so I, I just think it's a matter of time. And in the meantime, she's doing this extraordinary work for me. So I'm, I'm, I haven't been pushing her away too hard, I must admit. But I, I do want her to get that. I think it's very important. I think she's going to have a Meryl Streep kind of career, in my in my opinion. I mean, she has that kind of element of serious, uh, committed, long-term actress about her. The careers that re- rarely work nowadays, the careers that the people uh, like Betty Davis uh, used to have, and then, and uh, you know the big the big movie stars of the past who really worked over a period of thirty, forty, fifty years. I think kind of got that in her, and and they'll catch up to her. I, I almost after that I almost feel uh, horrible asking you this question, but it's well intended, Tana. Uh, I, I wondered if you if you've done any pilots for sitcoms because I I could see you in a in a sitcom that goes on for seven or eight years. Oh, I would. Yeah, that would. I mean, that would be really fun to get a great a, a great pilot um, like something like Sopranos. But but I guess that's not a sitcom, huh? <laughs> I would well, love. To, I love Jersey comedy. Is a sitcom. Uh, no, <laughs> no, I agree. I agree with you. And in fact, she was, she she was offered something, and they've tried to put together at Showtime, uh, which now has a new management. But uh, under the last management at Showtime, they were very interested in, and were working on doing a series 
for her based upon her character in Hollywood Dreams, and as and it turns out, like the, yeah, the, the and, female and entourage turns, sort of thing. And as, it, and as it turns out, the character that she now takes the, to the next step in in Queen of the Lot, that character and her situation as an actress coming to Hollywood and breaking through all of that is what they wanted to make a TV series about. And she got extremely close. She was the only one they were considering, and then the 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 heads of the of Showtime switched around, as as happens in that business. But I'm sure that one of these things will connect. And I agree with you about comedy. I think her way in, she's just been compared to, to, to in the Latin, in, in what she's done now in the bunch of reviews that are coming in to Judy Holiday, to Lucille Ball. You know, she's getting these great uh, comedian references, which I love because I think that side of her is truly remarkable. Too. Well, uh, let's uh, let, let's come full circle and talk some more about uh, Queen of the Lot, which, of course, as I mentioned earlier, is the sequel to Hollywood Dreams. Um, as the new film opens, Tana's can, can character... I, can, I, can I interrupt one yeah, way please. and just say that you do not have to... I, I have been de-emphasizing the fact that it's a sequel to Hollywood Dreams because you do not have to have seen Hollywood Dreams to, to get fully involved in Queen of the Lot. Hopefully people will see Queen of the Lot who have not seen Hollywood Dreams, and then we'll go and rent Hollywood Dreams. That would be nice. But it is a, it is a film that stands entirely on its own, and it's not a sequel which requires any prior knowledge. Well, Henry, you just wiped out my next question. I was going to ask you oh. how, much, how, much, how much time has taken place since the end of Dreams and the start of Queen. I don't mind talking to you about it. Just like, like let's keep it to ourselves, okay? <laughs> just, just between us. Three, three, three years, right? Kind of three years. Yeah, taken three place. years. Yep. Marjorie's mm-hmm. name, and she's been renamed Maggie Chase, and she's now the star of sort of low-class action adventure films, and she wants to be a real serious A-line, a a actress, a, what is it called? A-list. 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 There you go. But she's under, she's gotten two DUIs oh. within a, within a, an illegal amount of time, and so she is under house arrest. And has serious to, addiction problems. Yeah. And, and, which and she going, revels in because they, they're making her more famous. <laughs> well, she, well, let's be fair, she's, she's, she's on the fence. <laughs> well, she probably, she probably loves it now. <laughs> I don't know. I, I gotta tell you, I love the little bits of the action film that you keep showing. Uh, Isn't she something? Yeah. <laughs> I'm a black belt, so I actually um, took. Henry wasn't going to show anything. I said, "No, we got to show her an action. We got to show her an action." So I actually took a, a tiny crew, meaning two people, <laughs> a sound guy and a, a camera guy, to my uh, my teachers to my dojo and just shot this fight sequence which part of it was cut out, which I was really disappointed about. But um, but I did it in heels and that, that metallic jacket, and it was really cool, and I, I showed it to Henry. Um, but when we were three-quarters of the way finished with the, editing the film, and, and he put it in, so I was I was pretty yeah, stoked it's about a, that. a wonderful moment, yeah. Oh, it's very, very cool. As a matter of fact, that yeah. was part of what I think put the sitcom in my head. I thought, that looks like such a great... I mean, I don't know. It was just so funny. Oh, yeah. To anybody uh, yeah. out there who's listening, if they want me to star in <laughs> a sitcom <laughs> about um, um, martial arts or a spy who is, um, you know, not, this is not quite we, we have very differences, cookie. Anna and I. I, mm-hmm. I have different aspirations for her. Uh, I'm wanting her to get the Carol Lombard uh, roles, and, <laughs> and she wants to get the, I'm Jackie the, Chan, you know. Jackie Chan. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, you two are kind of far apart. It's amazing you do so much together. Um, yeah. <laughs> we ba- we balance each other off with our aesthetic, I think. That, that, and when you think about it, there's a lot of Jackie Chan and Catherine Hepburn. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Quote, I'm, uh, unquote, and cut. <laughs> that's, really, that's funny. We, I don't know where that came from. We may need a whole other uh, half hour to discuss that. I, I'm, I, I'm <laughs> I don't. I, I'm not even going to follow that up with a question. No, there's yeah, nowhere to go. <laughs> now, the uh, in in Queen of the Lot, the uh, the regular uh, Jaglum ensemble is present, but you've also thrown in this new wild card, Noel Wiley. Why? Why and that's, how? That's him? the most. That's the most exciting thing for me. The yeah. chemistry between Noah and Tana has taken this film to a whole new level. I've I've had some wonderful actors in my what is it, 15 or 16 films that I've made, some really terrific actors from Jack Nicholson, Dennis Hopper to, you know, Bukovny and all kinds of people. But the, the chemistry that exists between Tana 
and Noah Wiley on screen is so palpable. Every single review is talking about it, and it, it is, it's a magical element that a director cannot create. That has to come from the actors. And it was just our good luck that we got to know Noah at a certain period of time, and I said to him, would you be interested in doing this? And Tana had loved him on, on ER, which I, I put, Yeah, seen. I pushed hard for Noah. I kind of credit myself and, for and that. So, so, so we did a reading of the, of, of the play, actually, uh, with Noah in it, and I started appreciating how astonishing he was and, and what chemistry they had, how, what magic they have together. And, you know, that is something no actor, no, no director can take credit for. That's, that's the actors. That's the magic of, of Hepburn and Tracy and all the other people she, they're being compared to now, uh, that something happens between those two. You just want to watch them together. And Tana Frederick and Noah Wiley have this, this strange, wonderful, funny, romantic chemistry that you just can't take your eyes off of them. And for me, that's, that's elevating this film to a level of one step beyond most of my films. It, it gives me, and I have nothing, I have no, I deserve no credit for that except for letting them go. You know, they are both consummate comedians and serious actors at the same time. He can do what Tana could do, which is move into and out of dramatic uh, and then com- comedic without losing the reality of either side of that. And together, they're just phenomenal. Yeah, he's a he's a remarkable actress. I really think he's a cross between Jimmy Stewart and Henry Fonda, and he's just one of those guys who's willing to, you know, he's willing to play the handsome card, but he's also willing to laugh at himself and be a complete goofball. And, and that's just so much. It was so fun to, to work with him. He's amazing. Yeah, he is. Well, I have I have time for one more question, and I'm gonna I'm gonna throw it to Tana. Uh, I figure that the women in the audience want to know all about making out with Noah Wiley. So what can you what can you tell them to drive them just a little bit crazier? But I, you could tell them that I had to leave the set. <laughs> what? He didn't have so to leave hot. the set. It was I'm so hot. Kidding. Everybody, yeah, we burned the house down. Um, <laughs> uh, kissing Noah Wiley. I think I was. I think I was just you really told worried. Me it was I had. Fun. Now be 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 honest. You told me it was no, great he, fun, and that he's a great. It was a great. It was great fun. Um, uh, I have a really gr- I have a really gross inside thing. I I'm more self. I'm like really self conscious. I mean, I was kissing Noah Wiley for the love of God. I mean, my you know my mom is a nursing professor. And we watch ER every single week. So I at the very last scene, I had this this zit right in the corner of my lip, like one of those really embarrassing. Awful zits, and no, no, this I is was not where we have to end the program. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, I, was, <laughs> I was so afraid that it was going to pop, like right when I oh, asked that, come to on, what are you doing? To you, right at the end. No, it's it was it was Ladies really traumatic, and that's that part where I where I'm in that red suit and my hair is all done, and finally I'm not like being neurotic, and I say, "Who owns you?" And and you can't see it on the camera, but that sucker was like huge. And okay, so we don't have that sucker <laughs> anymore. How, so I don't know. I don't think Noah. that's going to make the girls jealous. But you know, <laughs> that's just life. That's just what happens when you kiss Noah away. And you get yet, kiss fat no, no, zit. no, no, <laughs> no. And yet he said, "What a great kisser you were." He told me that over and over again. You're just oh, trying to make God. up for the fact that uh, I'm I'm a geek that at heart. Told that story. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, that was wonderful. I love that story. Um, wow, uh, folks! Listen, you can see, and, and, and there we got to go. Uh, you can see Tana oh. Frederick starring in Henry Jaglin's latest film, Queen of the Lot, when it opens in the Los Angeles and Southern California area on Friday, November nineteenth. It then opens on December third in New York, with a wider release December tenth in Chicago, Boston, Seattle, and Minneapolis. Uh, and San Anna, Francisco Henry, and a few other San Francisco. Stops. Right. Minneapolis. Did I say, did you say Minneapolis? Yeah, Minneapolis. 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 got a World Series. I didn't need to mention them, you know? I mean, they got <laughs> enough going. Um, uh, Tana and Henry, this was a wonderful half hour. I'm so glad that you both were able to make it. And thank, uh, you. thank you so much for joining us in Mr. Media today. Thank you, thank you for, for having so nice. me on the show again. And, and uh, you, I love your show. You, you say the most adorable oh. things and in such a sweet <laughs> yet intelligent way. So thank you. Thank you. She very manipulates you. You see how perfect yeah, her no, manipulator I'm, I'm she is. There. <laughs> I know. She's going to write you a letter about how great <laughs> your show is. And she'll, she'll have a radio show next. 
<laughs> there you go. <laughs> hey, thank you guys so much. Good luck next week. Thank, thank you. Thank you very, very much. Appreciate it. Right. Take care. Bye. You too. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. And of course, original interviews with your favorite uh, actors and directors, surf over to our main website, mrmedia.com, mrmedia.com. You can subscribe to Mr. Media on iTunes and you'll never miss a show. Just search Mr. Media Interviews from within iTunes and subscribe for free. You can also listen with a piece of string and a tin can in many locations. If you've got an idea for a guest, a comment on today's show, or an interest in, an interest in advertising, email me directly at bob at mrmedia.com, mrmedia.com. You can also follow me on Facebook or on Twitter. It's twitter.com slash Andelman, or on Facebook, just search Mr. Media Interviews. Thanks so much for joining us today. Always appreciate you giving up a little piece of your day and spending it with us. Thanks for listening. <laughs>